I've made videos that are similar to this one, but the big difference here is that I'm going to be talking about all four classifications of connective tissue, whereas in previous videos I've only done one classification at a time. So first I'm going to talk through the basics of connective tissue, then I'm going to go through each classification and how to recognize the 12 different types of tissue, and then at the end I will have a series of 24 practiced questions. If you want to jump around this video just for the parts that are relevant to you, you can check the description for timestamps to show you where the different topics begin. So what are the four classifications of connective tissue? There's connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. Why is blood a part of connective tissue? Blood is part of connective tissue because it has the same embryonic origin as the rest of connective tissue, which is mesenchyme. Also, while the other families of tissues may have some non-living material as part of the tissue, they are mostly cellular. But connective tissue has a very high percentage of non-living material, which is called the matrix. And the same is true for blood. It is about 45% cellular material and 55% non-living matrix. So when we say matrix, what do we mean by that? As we said, it's the non-living portion and it's going to be made up of fibers and ground substance. So the three fibers are collagen, elastic, and reticular, and each connective tissue is gonna have at least one of those fibers except for blood because obviously we don't want fibers in our liquid bloodstream. Fun fact though, blood does have a protein called fibrinogen that is soluble in water, meaning it dissolves in water. But when you cut yourself, some of that fibrinogen is going to stop being soluble and turn into a fiber to create a fibrous net that is going to help plug up your cut and stop you from bleeding. The other part of the matrix is ground substance, which is essentially just a jello mold that the cells and fibers are embedded within. Some ground substances are less solid, some are more solid, depending on what they are made of. The ground substance in blood is called plasma and it's 99% water, so it's a fluid. The ground substance in connective tissue proper is a gel, so it's not quite fluid, not quite solid. In bone, the ground substance is calcified, so it is very solid. All right, so now that we've got the background information out of the way, we can start looking at the different classifications. Which classification are we looking at here? So this is connective tissue proper. Connective tissue proper comes in two flavors. Across the top row, we have loose connective tissue and on the bottom, dense connective tissue. When we're trying to differentiate connective tissue proper, we want to think about what kind of fibers are we seeing, what direction are those fibers going in, and we also want to classify the cells. So as I mentioned before, the three fibers are collagen, elastic, reticular. When you are using the most common stain, which is H and D, to dye your slides, collagen will be pink, elastic will be purple to black. But if they are using a different type of stain, those colors will not apply, so you cannot heavily rely on that. It's just a little bit of a hint. Reticular, on the other hand, you generally don't see it because you will only see reticular fibers when they use silver nitrate and oftentimes they're not using silver nitrate. So in many examples, there are reticular fibers present, but they are invisible to you because they did not use a stain that could soak into those fibers to make them visible. So on the top left, we are seeing adipose, which is made up of adipocytes. So We'll see it closer later, but each of these tiny little circles is a cell. The white space that you're seeing is empty space within the cell 
that if this were living tissue, it would be filled up with a droplet of fat. Next door, we're seeing at least two types of fibers and they're going in all different directions. So we see these finer black fibers and then in the background, the thicker pink fibers. And that's how we know that this is a real or connective tissue because it is the only one that has collagen and elastic going in many different directions. Also these little black specks we're seeing those are the nuclei of the fibroblasts that are living within that fibrous matrix. Over here, we're also seeing kind of darker black fibers, but now they're not strands. They're kind of making a net. That's because this is reticular connective tissue. Reticular, whenever you see reticular, it means net-like. So these are the reticular fibers that have been stained with that uncommon silver nitrate dye. And we can see kind of caught up in them. These are bunches and bunches of little red blood cells. So the red blood cells are not technically a part of the reticular tissue, but depending on where the sample was taken from, you very well may see lots of red blood cells or possibly white blood cells. The reticulocytes or reticular cells are the connective tissue cells and they are maintaining that reticular net. Down here, we are seeing fibers going in one direction and they appear to be collagen fibers because they are thicker and pink. Sandwiched in between them, we are seeing fibroblasts. This is dense, regular connective tissue. Next door, this is very, very similar, except now it looks more like hamburger meat because the fibers are going in multiple directions. And that's why this is dense, irregular. So there are fibroblasts there, it's just how everything is cut, you don't really typically see many of them. And last but not least, we have uh, at least two types of fibers going in one direction. In the front, that fiber would be elastic. And in the back, kind of out of, out of focus, that other fiber is collagen. And this is what we see in elastic connective tissue. And this is another case where sometimes we can see the fibroblasts, sometimes we cannot. But what you really want to pay attention to is the fact that the elastic fibers in elastic connective tissue are going in one direction and they really have this wavy, wavy appearance. So as a group, what are these guys? These are our three cartilages. And we can tell that they're cartilage because they all have lacunae, which are these empty kind of spaces. And within those lacunae, there are chondrocytes. So this dark dot in the center is the nuclei of the chondrocyte living within the lacunae. So you cannot see the nuclei always, like in this example, you can't. But if you look over here, those little pink dots are the nuclei. So to tell these guys apart from each other, you want to look at what's in between the lacunae and about how far apart are they. So over here, the lacunae are moderately far apart, and in between them, it's very smooth, very glassy. There's no visible fibers, which is characteristic of hyaline cartilage. So I say there's no visible fibers because there are fibers there. 
Um, there are collagen fibers within that ground substance. It's just the makeup of that ground substance is preventing the stain that they used from getting in and actually coloring the fibers. So we do not see the fibers there. Next door, these lacunae are very tight together. And when you look in between them, you see individual little threads and fibers. That is characteristic of elastic cartilage. And this last one here, if you look towards the edges, it very much looks like hyalin because it's kind of smooth in between the individual lacunae. But if you look towards the middle, you start to see a ramen noodle-like fiber. So that is characteristic of fibrocartilage. So these wavy fibers we're seeing are actually collagen fibers. So in this instance, they're not using that most common H&E dye, which is why those collagen fibers are not pink. So sometimes what can happen is you will be zoomed in on a part of the fibrocartilage where you can't see those hyaline cartilage edges. You can only see the collagen fibers. So... It could look a little bit like dense regular connective tissue depending on where you're zoomed in. If you're zoomed in in such a way where you can see that you have kind of these alternating layers, then you'll know that it's not dense regular for sure. But if you were zoomed in where you can't see the hyaline, you can't see the alternating layers, Maybe you would think, hey, like I've got fibers going in one direction, that's dense regular. But pay attention. When it is fibrocartilage, you can generally see there's still that clear zone of lacunae around the chondrocytes, and you do not see that clear zone around the cells in the dense regular connective tissue. So here we're looking at osseous tissue. And there are two varieties of osseous tissue, more commonly called bone tissue. We have spongy bone, which might also be called trabecular or cancellous bone. And then on the right, compact bone. So compact bone is the outer layer of the bone. The spongy bone is the inner layer and you can see that it does indeed look very spongy. And last but not least, blood. So I will mention that technically, not all three of these things are cells. The leukocytes, which are white blood cells, so these guys here and this guy here is a different type of leukocyte. Those are true cells because they have all the parts of the cell. But all of these guys, which are erythrocytes, one of the last things you do to make an erythrocyte is you get rid of the nucleus. So since it doesn't have its nucleus anymore, by definition, it is technically no longer a cell, even though it started as a cell. And then these little purple fragments here and over here, those are platelets. So those are cell fragments. You started out with a really big cell called a megakaryocyte, and that breaks down into little cell fragments that we call platelets. So technically, they are also not cells. They are cell fragments. But for simplicity, if you're just learning, I think it's okay to think of them as cells because they do at least start as cells. All right, so before we get into our quiz, real quick, let's review. Um, remember, on your lab exam, usually it's fill in the blank. But if you just know what all your options are, it kind of is multiple choice. It's just you are your own word bank. So being able to, from nothing, get all of the names out of your head is an important skill. 
So connective tissue proper, there were two varieties of that, which were loose and dense. What were our three types of loose connective tissue? Adipose, areolar, and reticular. Our three types of dense, dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic connective tissue. Our three types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. And our two types of bone, compact bone and spongy bone. All right, so now we are finally ready to start our quiz. For each slide, I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds of silence, and then I'm gonna start talking you through how you can arrive at the correct answer. So we see at least two types of fibers and they're going in all different directions, which would make this a realer connective tissue. So we're seeing one type of wavy fiber going in one direction. We are also seeing these very round cells with clear zones around them. So when we see these clear zones, we can guess that this is fibrocartilage. So we are seeing one fiber type going in one direction. When we look at the cells though, we don't really see any clear zones around them. They're very smushed. They're kind of lined up like ants in a line. So this would be dense regular connective tissue. So dense regular connective tissue and fibrocartilage both have collagen fibers, but if you look around the cells and decide, am I seeing clear zones or no clear zones, that's how you can tell it apart. So this is adipose. What do we call this one singular circle? That one singular circle is an adipose site. What do we have in the center of the circle? So if this was a living tissue, you would find triglycerides, AKA fat. So to be clear, it is this part of the tissue that we're interested in. So this kind of looks like hamburger meat. When you see that hamburger meat appearance, you are looking at irregular dense fibrous connective tissue. And just as a fun fact, do you know what type of tissue you're seeing here? 
So this is not connective tissue. This is stratified squamous epithelium, and it's the keratinized type um, because these thick flaky layers are keratinized layers. So we see these clear zones, which we know are called lacunae, and then in between the lacunae, are we seeing fibers or not? So we're not seeing fibers, it is very smooth, which would make this hyaline cartilage. So we are looking at bone. There's two types of bone. Which one is this? So this will be compact bone, and we can tell it's compact bone because compact bone is made up of these many individual units. So these individual circular units are called osteons. If you would like to hear more about the osteon and the osteon structure, I have another video about that. I will link in the description. So we're seeing a single type of net-like fiber, and it is black. In the net-like fiber, we are seeing many other small cells kind of caught up in it. This is characteristic of reticular connective tissue, because reticular means net-like. So we're seeing the empty spaces, which are the lacuna. In between the lacuna, we're seeing fibers, and the lacuna are tightly packed together. And that's how we know that this is elastic cartilage. So quite easily, this is identifiable as blood. What do we call these types of cells here? So those would be leukocytes, aka white blood cells. All of the little donut shaped ones would be erythrocytes, aka red blood cells. And the fragments that we're seeing would be platelets, aka thrombocytes. So this is the part of the slide that we're interested in. We're seeing one very distinct fiber type going in one direction, and then in the background, out of focus, there's a second fiber type going in one direction. These darker fibers are elastic fibers, and that's why this is elastic connective tissue. So this, those red squiggles, those are the same fiber types we just saw. We're just now seeing them stained with a different dye. 
This is another example of elastic connective tissue. So what we're seeing here is irregular dense fibrous connective tissue, because once again, we're seeing that hamburger meat-like appearance. Now, the reason this one looks a little different from what we've seen before is because now we're actually seeing two fiber types. We're seeing collagen and elastic. If you look at a lot of textbooks, you will see irregular dense fibrous connective tissue is described as having a percentage of elastic fibers, which I didn't mention earlier because I've never actually personally seen a slide where you could see the elastic fibers until this and really it's not the most important characteristic of the irregular dense connective tissue. But I think this is a good learning lesson of sometimes things don't appear exactly as you expect them to appear, but if you go through process of elimination, there will be one choice that is more likely than the others. So if you thought about every other different type of connective tissue, you should have realized not adipose, not cartilage, not regular, and eventually you would have been left with only this. So most students can very quickly and easily identify this as adipose because it really looks nothing like the other types, but a word of warning Sometimes students confuse this with a non-connective tissue. They confuse it with simple squamous epithelium. When you look at them side by side, it's quite easy to tell them apart. The simple squamous has thicker looking walls and there's many, many nuclei because in the simple squamous, this is a bunch of cells holding hands to make this circle. In the adipose, we're seeing one single cell that's been stretched out by a drop of fat. So over here, you see a bunch of nuclei because you have many cells. Here you see one nuclei because it's one cell. So if you want to see more examples of these side by side, check the description because I do have a video where I show them both at different magnifications so you can compare and contrast. So the fiber we're seeing is collagen going in one direction. The cells, which are the fibroblasts, are smushed. And that's how we can tell that this is regular dense fibrous connective tissue. A word of warning, a lot of people will mix up this and smooth muscle, but that's a little bit too much to go into right now in this video. So once again, check the description for my video on that. So these spaces are lacunae, the cells are chondrocytes, in between is smooth, which is why this is hyaline cartilage. Once again, we are seeing lacunae and chondrocytes, but when we look between the lacuna, it is very fibrous. So that is why this is elastic cartilage. So we're seeing fibers going in one direction and we see there's a clear kind of a zone around the different cells, and that's how we know that this is fibrocartilage. So I just wanted to show you that um, if I had cropped it differently, 
you would have been able to see that there's the kind of highland edges, but I intentionally cropped so you could not see the highland edges so that you would recall that you have to look for the clear zones to tell the difference between dense fibrous and fibrocartilage. So this one, you really have to look around the slide and keep in mind that different slides at different magnifications are going to look different. So pay attention to here. You're seeing those black net-like fibers. This is once again reticular tissue. It's just that the other examples I showed you were more zoomed in. So the fibers appeared to be bigger and you could more easily see the individual red blood cells and white blood cells caught up in the reticular tissue net. Once again, another example of dense, regular, fibrous connective tissue. I apologize, I probably have said it like 17 different ways um, because the adjective order does not really matter so much for this tissue, but I would look at whatever your professor has called it and just that is what you should call it. Um, although I might be saying regular dense, dense regular, I might be not saying fibrous, I'm all over the place, I apologize, but it is just one tissue. All right, so we see those clear zones. That's gonna be our lacunae, so we know this is cartilage. It's just an ultra close picture of cartilage. And we can very nicely see the little fibers, so we know it is elastic cartilage. So we are seeing elastic and cartilage going in all different directions, which makes this a realer connective tissue. We are seeing a smooth matrix in between the lacunae which is why this is hyaline cartilage. So this is our last question, and I have chosen something that has multiple different types of connective tissue on one slide. So what are we seeing here? That is fibrocartilage with the hyaline edges and wavy collagen fibers. What is this? So this is the first time we're seeing it since I showed you the first example. This is spongy bone. Now, spongy bone is called spongy bone because it has a lot of empty spaces in between, but those empty spaces aren't actually empty. There's things in them. So in your spongy bone, you can either have red marrow or yellow marrow. Red marrow, red marrow is where you'll find your blood cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets forming. But these blood cells just aren't, you know, floating in space in here. There's another type of tissue that is supporting those cells. We just can't see it. So invisible to us because they didn't use silver nitrate. 
is reticular tissue. So reticular tissue, you always find it supporting cells of some kind. All right. So those are all the examples I have. My advice to you is any type of tissue that you're having trouble with that you can't identify readily, get multiple examples of it, look at it side by side, and keep in mind, you know, some might be really zoomed in, some might be farther out. And then also, if you're having trouble differentiating two types of tissue, if you get two types of tissue confused for each other, get multiple examples of each of those, put them side by side, and compare and contrast. And if you have any questions on anything I've said today, please just leave a comment and I will do my best to answer you. Hope this was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.